discussions about which ending in GTA 4 is canonical continue to this day. We would consider each of the endings in GTA 4 until GTA 5 to be canonical. Many players also hoped that the creators would lead the story in the next parts of GTA in such a way that each choice could be the right one. And here it must be admitted that this would not only be an interesting solution, but also a good one, because each player could choose the fate of certain characters. Unfortunately, as we know very well, this did not happen. When we talk about canon, thanks to GTA 5, we know that the revenge ending in GTA 4 is the canonical one. Before we move on, let me add that this episode will be full of spoilers regarding the endings of GTA 4. So if you still have this stage ahead of you, and you believe that despite all these years, you'll still sit down to play this game on your own, then think about whether you want to learn some facts beforehand. Meanwhile, let's first take a quick look at what both endings look like. This will be extremely useful today because we'll be moving smoothly between these threads all the time. So what we need to know, in a nutshell, is that the deal ending is the ending in which Nico decides to help Pegorino and work with Dimitri again to get rich. The consequences of this is that Nico's cousin, Roman, dies at his wedding. In turn, Katie, who was very close to Nico, turns her back on the protagonist because he betrayed his morals for money. Hello? Nico, it's Kate. Hello, Kate. How are you? I'm fucking awful, if you must know. Please don't say that. Why? I can't do this. Can't do what? I like you. I like you too much, but I know you. I know the life you lead. What does that mean? It means... It means I'm going away. It means I love you, but I won't bring children into this world to be raised without a father. It means... I don't know what it fucking means. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about Roman. I'm sorry about the life you led. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I sent you an email. Goodbye. On the other hand, the revenge ending is the ending in which Nico goes to kill Dimitri, as a result of which he does not help Pegorino. James Pegorino decides to take revenge on Nico's insubordination. This time, Katie is killed at Roman's wedding. She was proud of Nico for not being blinded by money and for not working with one of his greatest enemies, thus putting many other important values above money. And now that we have a solid foundation, let's move on to the actual analysis. When it comes to things being canon, we already know that canonical events should be those that take place when we choose the revenge ending. Players give several other reasonable arguments about this than just Roman's profile on Life Invader. One such reason is that Packy does not mention his sister in GTA 5, which would make a lot of sense according to these people because she dies in the revenge ending. Rest his soul. My pal Michael, God rest his soul, and another boy, Nico, who's probably dead too. They're all dead. Yet another is how Packy speaks about Nico. Packy talks about Nico as if he would never leave the criminal underworld, which is also more likely for these people in the case of the revenge ending. Here, I must admit that I never understood their reasoning, because for me, this ending means quite the opposite. Nico will leave the criminal underworld and run a taxi business with Roman. This is also evidenced by an interesting fact from GTA 5, which we will now discuss in detail, because certainly not everyone is familiar with the topic. By the way, this curiosity completely rules out the possibility of the canonical ending being the one in which Nico makes a deal with Dimitri. We can see this interesting fact on Nico's profile on Life Invader. There, Nico gives Roman his best wishes. What is most important about this is that Roman has a profile on a platform that did not exist during the GTA 4 events yet. This means that the revenge ending is consistent with the events of GTA 5, which is also from the HD universe. After all, it's hard to suspect that someone else set up Roman's Life Invader account. It's unlikely that accounts get created for people who died on such platforms. And when this interesting fact about Roman came to light, many people were outraged. Yes, the revenge ending is a slightly happier option, and for many reasons, it would seem to be better for the vast majority of players. Well, even though Roman is a total idiot, there are not many people who dislike him or don't sympathize with this character. This is one of the more compelling reasons for players to choose the revenge ending. Plus, of course, their great hate regarding Dimitri. On the other hand, the revenge does not match the atmosphere of GTA 4. GTA 4 is a game that should have the worst possible ending, and such an ending seems to be the one we will see when we make a deal with Dimitri once again. It's worth reminding that in this ending, Roman dies, and another person who is close to Nico, that is Katie, ends her relationship with the main character of the game, because he became a complete hypocrite. 
Katie doesn't want to date someone for whom money is everything. She doesn't want to have contact with a person who tried to cooperate with someone who had done so much harm to him. As we can see, Nico is left alone in this ending, without his cousin and anyone close to him. However, what is most interesting in all this is that before we learned the interesting information about Roman from GTA 5, there were many indications that the canonical ending should be bad. The ending in which Nico makes a deal with Dimitri and then loses absolutely everything, eventually being left with 250 grand in his wallet, which only reminds him of the death of his cousin. This is strongly supported by the mission That Special Someone. It's a mission in which Nico confronts the man who set up his friends who were brutally murdered for a thousand dollars. Despite Nico's great desire to kill this man, there are many indications that the canonical approach here is not to kill Darko. This proves the main character's metamorphosis, which was to take place after he arrived in the United States. Nico would conclude that revenge is not a good solution. Taking this into account and the fact that Nico felt responsible for his cousin, the revenge ending does not make sense. In this ending, Nico takes revenge and gives up $250,000, thanks to which Nico and Roman would have a very comfortable life for some time. Besides, there are many indications that Nico has no intention of taking revenge. During the story of GTA 4, Nico gained many powerful friends, such as United Liberty Paper. If Nico wanted to, he could work even more for United Liberty Paper and ask them to help him get Dimitri. If the contact from ULP was able to find and bring for Nico some guy from Europe who could be anywhere, it would probably be even easier in the case of Dimitri. The scope of the search would be narrowed only to Liberty City. As we can see, Nico was not looking for revenge in this case. Another sign left by the developers is the mission The Master and the Molotov, in which Faustin shouts the following line of dialogue while escaping to the roof. This American greed takes everyone. It is like a disease. This sentence is a kind of warning not to make your choices dependent on what monetary benefits they can potentially bring. This American greed takes everyone. It's like a disease. The last reason that can support the deal ending is that the ending where everything goes bad for Nico is more appropriate for this game. It is intended to convey to the player that what matters is not the change of place of residence, but the internal transformation. Moreover, this ending is supposed to show that karma returns. Despite many people's sympathy for Nico, it must be clearly stated that he committed many atrocities and many sins. Nico has shown great hypocrisy many times, such as when he was angry with Darko for betraying his friends for money, while he killed many times for money as well. A thousand. <laughs> you killed my friends for one thousand dollars. How much do you charge to kill someone? It must be underlined that the ending, in which Nico is left alone in Liberty City, without a family and without a woman for whom he has feelings, seems to make a lot of sense. However, there are many clues and arguments in the game that clearly indicate that the ending, consistent with the creator's mindset, is actually revenge. The developers even took care of such details as the weather, which is sunny if you choose the revenge ending. It might seem that this is no argument, but we know perfectly well that Rockstar North likes to include such hidden messages in their productions. Moreover, how else can we explain the fact that, at the end of the game, with the Out of Commission mission, which follows after selecting Revenge, sunny weather will always be waiting for us? In turn, ending the game with the A Revenger's Tragedy mission, the task that occurs after selecting Deal, there will always be cloudy, ugly, rainy weather. Another subtle hint is the shot at the Statue of Happiness in the last mission of the game. During the deal ending where we kill Dimitri on Happiness Island, the statue is shown from behind. In turn, during the last mission in the revenge ending where we kill Pegorino, the statue is shown from the front. These are very subtle messages, but it's hard not to look for a deeper meaning in them, something that the creator simply wanted to convey to us. Apart from this circumstantial evidence, we should also add the question of what was going on in Nico's head and how he perceived Katie and their further relationship. As we know perfectly well, Nico had great desires to finally leave the criminal underworld. Nico eventually wanted to settle down and end the madness that was constantly happening because of his lifestyle. When Nico called Katie and asked her what to do, she told him not to get into further trouble, which would probably arise if Nico made a deal with Dimitri. Additionally, Katie emphasized that there were things much more important than money. It's important to act the way you feel, and it's important to act following your principles. 
Therefore, combining these two facts, which is that Nico wanted to settle down and have a normal life, but Katie told Nico what he should do, it would seem that, once again, the revenge ending makes much more sense, at least from the perspective of what was going on in Nico's head. Moreover, Nico also knew that Dimitri was actually his last obstacle on the road that led straight to leaving the criminal underworld. Not only will Nico get rid of his greatest enemy, and thus he'll feel much safer, but he'll also impress Katie, who may finally let him get closer to her. So, as we can see, even though the deal ending seems to make a lot of sense from the game's point of view, it must be emphasized that there are also many plausible arguments behind the revenge ending. The question is whether the creators actually did the right thing by choosing the revenge ending in GTA 4 as the canonical one. When Rockstar decided to create a gloomy GTA filled with tragic events, it should have gone in the direction of total drama. Seeing the beautiful weather, when Roman was happy and said to Nico, we won man, we won, you get the impression that everything ends well. It's hard not to be at least a little happy at such a moment, but the question is whether such an ending complements such a brilliant drama-filled storyline. Should this partly happy ending happen? I leave you with this question for now, so be sure to write in the comments what you think. To hear more about why Nico Bellic is the most interesting protagonist in the GTA series, in my opinion, be sure to watch the video displayed on the left side of the screen. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon!